A very happy new year to Jim Connolly of USCHO.com. First time we've seen him in 2021. And Jim, a very happy new year for the U.S. World Juniors, who captured gold on Tuesday night with a shutout victory over Canada. How would you assess the Big Ten players on the, those two rosters and the impact that they had during the tournament? Yeah, well, well, first off, I'll start with just how great of a victory that is to beat Canada. It's the fourth time the U.S. has been able to do that in a gold medal game. And sometimes it's, you know, it's great to play your rival because that one gets you up. And I think so. Congratulations to, to that team. In terms of the Big Ten players, you know, everybody that made that team from the Big Ten had a role. You know, obviously, Alex Turcott, the former Wisconsin Badger, he had the biggest role. He got to play alongside Zegris and Kaliev. And that's, you know, that was a power line. Obviously, Zegris will go down as having one of the, the greatest world junior tournaments and world junior careers of, of any American, let alone any player that's played in that event. Um, but then you look at some of the other players. I look at like Matty Beneers and uh, Cole Caulfield, you know, them on that second line together. They really helped out with Matt Boldy. And maybe they weren't popping the pucks in the net the way that that first line was. But the just the timing of plays, you know, I, I think it was, you know, late in the second period of the gold medal game and the U S is, is holding on to a two nothing lead, but boy, was Canada pressing and pressing and Matty Beneers kind of just takes the puck out of his defensive zone, creates something. And it just, it, it kind of just took away a lot of the Canadian momentum in, in those small plays. You even saw it on the back end. Like I think late in the game, you know, Ryan Johnson, uh, the, the defenseman from Minnesota, he makes a really poised move because he was in the right position. He's in the slot. He takes, you know, a centering pass and takes a lot of pressure off his goaltender, takes a lot of pressure off the defense. Then, you know, we can talk almost about all of these players. The one that stands out to me, though, that, that doesn't get as much acclaim is Cam York. Obviously, the captain leading this team. You know, I, I really relished in the moment of watching him be able to award the gold medals. And that was something that was unique at this COVID time. Usually it's the IIHF staff and all these people that are awarding the medals. But it was him and John Van Beesbrook getting, and he got to give it to his team. And almost all of his teammates, you could see, wanted to go to him to get their medal because, you know, they wanted to give the big hug. But it was his 20th birthday on Tuesday. And, you know, to take home a gold medal on that day and, and be such a great leader for this World Junior team, uh, you can't say enough about Cam York. Yeah, that's a cool change. I'd be okay with that, even in post-COVID era, to continue sure, that tradition in handing out the gold medal. Jackson Lacombe in the semifinal game with an unbelievable pass to lead to a U.S. goal. Obviously, he and other Minnesota players will return to a goal for team, Jim, that is 10-0. and 10-0. 10-0. And I think it's time to start talking about, from a historic perspective, how good this Minnesota team is, not just unbeaten, but they've given up 13 goals in 10 games. They have a plus 24 goal margin right now. How good is Minnesota, and are they clearly establishing themselves as the top team in the country? I mean, certainly this is, you know, putting forth a historic type of team for Minnesota. You're talking, I believe it was 1940, the last time they started at, at 10 and 0. That's a, it's been, that's been a long time. And there's been some great teams that have come through uh, the Twin Cities since that time. But you, you look at it, you, as you mentioned, they're plus 24. I don't feel like their offense has even really cranked up. I mean, they got six. Uh, I believe it was on Monday against Arizona State. And, you know, and that's maybe it's signs of the times that you're able to pop some pucks in the back of the net. That's what you need to get going. But now what, once these players, you, you're talking, you were missing three players from the back end because of World Juniors for, for an extended period of time. Now they'll get back into the lineup with Minnesota. I mean, this, is, this feels like a team, I don't want to call them unstoppable. And especially as you get later into the season, into the Big Ten tournament, into the NCAA tournament, that one and done uh, philosophy that we have to deal with, it, it can be difficult. And this isn't this, the NHL where you get to play seven games and show that you're the best team over a course of seven games. This is one game going out there and, it, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking to lose those games and it takes such poise and focus and determination to make sure that you don't get into those situations. So that will be the pressure that goes along with this. Now, if I can make one point about being 10 and 0, I always say it would be great to be Cornell again and, and be the undefeated team, but I always say it's better to take some pressure off and ha not having people talk about the undefeated team. So if it, you know, I know Bobby Moscow was to win every single game, but if he lost one here, lost one there, 
I bet he'd be satisfied. You know, he's in great position right now in the Big Ten standing. So, you know, might be good for some humble pie. Make sure that this team understands that losing can happen as well. Hey, there's at least one USCHO poll voter that doesn't think they're the best team in the country, right? They were not <laughs> unanimous. BC did get one first place vote in this past week's poll. Up next for Minnesota, it's Wisconsin. I mentioned rosters, not roster, as far as Big Ten players are concerned, because obviously when Cole Caulfield goes back to Madison, he gets the one up on Dylan Holloway, who was on that Canada team junior roster. But when you start to look at this matchup this weekend between the Gophers and Badgers, obviously a great rivalry, always a great series right now. Now the top two teams inside the Big Ten, what should we be watching for in this one, Jim? Well, I think, you know, I think it's the styles and we've seen Minnesota be really tight on, on the defensive end. Great goaltending, obviously from LaFontaine, but I think that you, if you're Wisconsin, you're trying to find ways to generate. This is a, you know, this is a Minnesota team that just doesn't give up the chances. So you've got to find a way to generate that offense, get behind the defense. I think we've even talked about it here before create second chances because this Minnesota defense hasn't been giving up a lot of rebounds. And if you don't get to the net and really create, it's much more difficult to score, but you get there that second, third chance, that's when you're going to pop some in the net. And you saw it for Arizona state this past week, you know, Monday's game. I thought that they were pretty, you know, creative on offense. Obviously they've got a guy named Johnny Walker that makes incredible plays and including the, the famous Michigan lacrosse goal that he duplicated, but you know, you've got to look to find offense. And I think that that is what, what Wisconsin's biggest challenge will be for Minnesota. It's just play your game. If you go out and you really just stick to your, staple of defense get your goals you, you know i know that bob moscow wants to see the puck start flying in the net you put the, yourself in those types of situations it should be a great weekend of hockey it's a great series we don't know i haven't heard you haven't heard whether these players coming back from world juniors will be in the roster i know there's some quarantining issues that uh go along with covid but uh regardless i think whatever players are on the ice for each team this is it's a heavyweight series and that could affect Michigan, obviously, as well. Important in-state rivalry series this week against Michigan State. Michigan State, much like the last couple of years, they have one really good game in a series, and then they really struggle. Michigan, meanwhile, they're still very highly thought of nationally, though their record's right just about 500 because the schedule has been so tough. Michigan, Michigan State, what's the focus? Well, I, th I think, you know, if you're, if you're uh, Dan Cole and you're Michigan State, you're thinking about consistency. You kind of mentioned it. They, they usually put together one really good game a weekend. And I, I don't even want to say that Monday's game against Penn State wasn't a great game. They just couldn't find the net. And when you can't get to the back of the net a night after you score five, then you get shut out. It, you know, and you only gave up one goal in each of those two games, yet you only came away with one victory. So that's that's always a struggle for a coach to, to deal with. And I think Mel Pearson's kind of really struggling for the same consistency with his team. He needs to see that consistency. He needs to find a way to make sure that the, the, the back end is taken care of because at times his goaltender's seen too many quality bids. And that's that's an issue. But he does, he's got the Jets, he's got the players on that team that will make those you know end-to-end -end rushes score goals they're a fast team Michigan and, and I think that be, you know, is one of the biggest challenges that Michigan State will face trying to slow this Michigan team down all right great stuff as always Jim Connolly of USCHO.com Jim great to catch up have a great week enjoy a couple of really fun series this weekend inside the Big Ten that should be great hockey thanks Rick